I'm Sadie, and one day I'll go into the wild to study bugs and animals and weird microbes that devour entire towns. But for now, I'm studying the people in my life, complete freaks of nature. Die, amazing things can be found anywhere. Just look at the spectacular display of wildlife at RB Bennett High, or as I like to call it, the zoo. For instance, the dance of the pygmy mountain biker, who is now endangered. The calls of the spiny crested screamo, and his cousin, the off key wannabe. Note the elaborate body marking of the greater painted hallway viper. And of course, the lesser painted hallway viper. But more rare than the giant striped squeakier, more arresting than the common barking vice principal, and even more stunning than the red belly door sucker, is the breathtaking, the heart stopping, broad shouldered charmer. Owen Anthony. Okay, everybody in the pool. Friday, we picked partners for the survival swim unit, and if I can go through with it, I'm asking Owen Anthony. He's so cute and friendly, it'll be like swimming with a dolphin. Well, a really cute dolphin. And then there's Chelsea Brewer. My project board, all about Chelsea Brewer. As a one-day naturalist, I'd been watching Chelsea for a while now and collecting interesting facts about her. And there's one thing I'm pretty sure of. Chelsea Brewer is a land animal, not a water animal. See, on flat ground, Chelsea is super poised, super popular, and even super elegant. But in the water, wow. She made me look like Olympic material. In fact, now that I'm looking at her here in the pool, her butterfly looks more like a distressed hippo. Yeah, a distressed hippo. Sadie? Huh? What did you just say? Did you just call Chelsea Brewer a distressed hippo? Um, did I say that out loud? Gee, I don't know. Do you think maybe you did? I didn't mean it in a, a bad way. And I'm sure whoever wrote this didn't either. That's why I'm not mad. You aren't? Nope. Too focused on getting even. Okay, I was in trouble, but I wasn't the only one. Across town, my friend Rain was in serious trouble of his own. Rain, what is this? Uh, Tragic accident. You see, I was walking down the hall one way with my test paper, and then Mr. Goldsmith was walking down the other way, and then all of a sudden he completely lost control of his red grading pen, and then... You're supposed to be studying for these history tests. I do study, though. I study all the time. <laughs> you know, it holds its value better if you don't open it. Enough, Rain. I'm tired of your excuses. You need to do better. Prepi nadia vasis tamatimatasu. Your cousin Milo studied every night for three hours. Three hours? And look where he is today. Don't you want to be more like him with a prestigious product control job? Look, I, I just, I promise I'll do better on my next test, okay? You'll bring your grade up two full letters. Two? Otherwise, you can get started on your future career, scrubbing the toilets at the restaurant. But I, I just- You and the plunger together all weekend. You're dead meat. No, this is dead meat. I'm right. So what did my clueless sister do this time? She called Chelsea Brewer a hippo. Accidentally. Chelsea Brewer? Are you crazy? I do not know you. 
Murphy. Now that's the correct response to the ticking off of Chelsea Brewer. She's got a real hate on for you. She's not gonna let this one go. It was just an observation, practically a compliment. All I said was, in the water, she looked like a distressed hippo, which she did. If you knew anything about hippos, it's not my fault she didn't get it. That's not the way everybody at school sees it. Well, that's the way they're gonna see it. You see, I was not wrong. I mean, I've been studying hippos and their lovable quirks since I was five. And Chelsea has the same lovable quirks. She just doesn't know it. But as soon as I explain to Chelsea and the rest of the school what I meant and, you know, get her up to speed about hippos, I just know she's gonna understand. So this is the library. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, sorry. Um, I need to set up somewhere with no distractions. I'm talking the worst, boringest, most fun challenge desk you've got. So I can really focus on my, uh, um, so I can really focus on my, um, on my, um... Studies. Right, studies. Um, You're new at this, aren't you? Sit there, open book, stare at book, and don't make any noise. Right. Sit. Open book, stare at book. So as you see, one distressed hippo thrashes around making strange wheeze honk noises and spewing large quantities of water and mucus from its huge nostrils. I hope that clears things up. I have never seen Chelsea that mad. How can she hate me more now? Why doesn't she get it? I wonder. This is so unfair. This is like all those scientists in the old days, and they were way ahead of their time, and people got freaked out and burned them at the stake. Uh-huh, that's exactly what this is like. The death by fire part, anyway. So, I think you better stay away from Chelsea Brewer for a while. I can't. I'm doing yard work for her mom today. The din of the battle outside the ramparts. Go on, I guy. Oh, man, he's down I thought it was supposed to be quiet in here. Underlined that the situation was untenable, leaving the only viable option to be a tactical retreat. I can't believe this. We're the librarians. Two male fighting fish. What were you thinking? How could I know they were both males? They were from different tanks. For a reason, they're going back. <clears throat> Do you know what that freckle-faced Edward kid is calling me now? Chelsopotamus. And did you know that three quarters of the hippo's body is its stomach? Because Derek McCormick does. So he photoshopped my cheerleading picture and emailed it to, like, the world. Oh, and then there's the guy who got okay. hippos mitt. I get it. Look, I'm sorry people are such jerks. And I'm sorry this has gotten so out of hand. But you're not sorry about what you said, are you? Okay. For the record, I was feeling really guilty for getting Chelsea into this mess. But I only just started to obsess on that when... Well, would you look at this? S-H heart O-A. How sweet. And what do we have here? Sadie Anthony? Practicing your future signature? Oh well, it's too bad you don't stand a chance with him anymore. But you won't know when I'll get you. Or how I'll get you. But you can be sure of one thing. It'll involve Owen Anthony.
Did you know that the hippo is one of the deadliest animals on Earth? Even though I felt bad for Chelsea, I was starting to feel worse for me. What do you do when you're being hunted? Well, if you've got the protective equipment, it doesn't matter who you hang out with. Or you could make like vegetation if that's your thing. Or you could always try to out-predator your predator. But none of these strategies seemed exactly right for the threatened ninth grader. And unless I can just get lost in the crowd, I'm hippo chat. You know, I'm getting pretty tired of hearing the sound of your fury. Oh, very clever. I'm still waiting for Plato's apology. Well, I happen to think this is much ado about nothing. More like a comedy of errors. Hey, excuse me. Hello? It's like the Lord of the Flies out here. Huh. At least according to my notes. In dubious battle. In praise of folly. If I could just get some quiet, my weekends are going down the toilet. Literally. Uh, what's going on in oh, here? Keep it up and it'll be two solitudes. Sadie, you know about fish and fights? Just talk to Mr. Byron. He put fighting fish in Mrs. Byron's tanks. You're just a fish. You're overreacting. Okay, that's the last spike. The unabridged bait book. You wouldn't. Oh no. Whoa! I'm not backing down this time. You hear? I'm not backing down. Mr. Byron made a simple, classic move, what scientists call fight or flight. See, when threatened, animals, like, say, these Canada geese, will either duke it out with an enemy or turn tail and run away from it. Mr. Byron had chosen to fight for his principles no matter what, and that gave me an idea. Mr. Byron was right. Why should I back down? At lunch, while I was doing my dog walking gig, I figured out just how I was gonna stand my ground with Chelsea, too. When Chelsea and her friends showed up, I have to admit I was feeling pretty nervous, but still, I was determined to test my theory. I just had to stand my ground, right? Right. So here goes. Look, Chelsea, I'm sorry about the way things turned out, but if you wanna get me, now's the time. I'm not running, so just go ahead and embarrass me or whatever it is you have planned. What's the point? I couldn't believe it. Chelsea smiled at me. She'd let it go. What I didn't know was Chelsea didn't smile at me because she was over it. She smiled at me because, as it happened, while I was walking the dogs, I'd accidentally stepped in this, er, uh, well, in this rather big hunk of who? Hey, buddy, you uh, ready for that big test? Shh, studying. Is there anywhere she didn't stink up? Man, is there anywhere I didn't stink up? Man, that is not a good look for you. Like it's not bad enough that I tracked poo through the whole entire school. They made me skip my spare to clean it up. Chelsea Brewer, I wouldn't bother trying to get you anymore. You're doing a good enough job embarrassing yourself. I'm putting my face in this bucket. Just let me drown. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> I am so pumped. The comeback kid passes, nay, aces the history test. So long, plunger boy. Ray, that's amazing. You were so worried going in. So you even got the trick question, number four? <laughs> it was C. 
No, it was B. Trick questions are always B. But I thought that was the trick. Oh, well, that's just one question. I still got all that other stuff about the War of 1812. Was that on the test? Wasn't that the essay question? I wrote three pages on that. Don't worry, at least you got the easy one, right? Number 12? Why would you get? Henry Hudson. Oh. You didn't even get the easy one? I failed. What am I gonna do? Look, it's, it's not your fault. Your mom's gotta understand. You're right, it's not my fault. It was the library's fault. And to a slightly lesser degree. Eh. But more the library. Exactly. So just show her what you were up against and she'll reconsider. Yeah, when I show her what was going on in there, she'll have to believe me. Unbelievable. You give a kid a good home, good food, good clothes, and this is what I get? Your father, he works hard. I work hard. I see you are going to learn what hard work is at the restaurant. You'll see. It wasn't my fault. It's deafening in that library. I couldn't hear myself think, much less study. You're totally going to understand why I'm on the test when you see for yourself. Do you see? It's total chaos in here. Shh. What happened? Sadie, tell her. Tell us not to in the Egine, you're going to spend every weekend toilet plunder and well, the fighting in the library looked like it was officially over. So the whole fight or flight thing must have worked out for Mr. Byron. Who knows why it didn't work for me? In science, of course, there are always variables that you don't expect. Like in Australia, they had a beetle problem, so they brought in cane toads to eat the beetles. Only the cane toads didn't eat the beetles, preferring a diet of, oh, household pets. Oops. So they just wound up making their problem bigger. Sound familiar? I guess not all of us are as lucky as Mr. Byron. Except... Mr. Byron, what happened to your fighting fish? Took them back. But I don't get it. I thought you were standing your ground. Well, it upset her. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. I mean, they're just fish. Oh, let's never fight again. So much for fight. I guess Mr. Byron picked flight instead. Meanwhile, I was back where I started. Make that worse than where I started. Because two days ago, I couldn't wait for this, but now, dread. My little feud with Chelsea Brewer had taken a major bite out of my popularity. Until... Okay, everybody, partner up for survival swim. Owen Anthony. The Owen Anthony smiled at me. Owen Anthony wanted to be my partner. Why? I don't know, but who cares? I'll take it. Go for it. We'll be partners. But then I saw Chelsea Brewer the most popular girl in school, sitting there alone because nobody wanted to pair up with a distressed hippo. It's funny, I guess I'd been so busy observing her that I'd never really seen her. And right then, she didn't look like a big threatening hippo at all. She just looked like a really bad swimmer who was bummed she didn't have a partner. And then suddenly, I got it. Mr. Byron did what he did because people are complicated. And sometimes there's only one thing to do, whether you think you're right or not. Hi. Need a partner? Excuse me? Well, I don't know, I just figured. I mean, you need a partner, I need a partner. What, so you can insult me some more? No, it's just, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry for what I said, really. And now I want to make it up to you, so let's be partners, okay? That's really sweet. Thanks. I guess the only thing I can say is, forget it. <laughs> I've already, Got a partner. Well, how about that? She got me, Chelsea was right. I didn't know how or when, but Owen Anthony was involved. I hate to admit it, but I was sort of impressed. But the question was, 
What would Owen Anthony think of me now? So, uh, thanks for that. Right. Um, sorry. Now partners with a distressed hip. Don't even say it. Okay, but still, she nearly drowned me twice today. Look, I'm sorry. I have no idea. It was just one of those things. It's okay. I get it. You do? No, you don't. Do you? Yeah. What you did was cool. In theory, but didn't exactly work on Chelsea. Maybe on her it didn't. See you later. Uh huh? See ya. See ya. Wow, the world is a weird place, just full of contradictions. For example, the fiery-eyed intimidator. She may have a hard, armor-like exterior, but inside, she's actually kind of sensitive. And the broad-shouldered charmer, who knew he'd turn out to be so friendly. And then there's me, busy looking at everybody but myself. Still, who knew screwing up so bad might not be so bad? I guess sometimes it pays to keep your eyes open. <laughs>